right? I'm holding them, guys. I'm holding them. Oh, that's right. Hey. Say it, guys. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having an amazing day today. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how we introduced Jackson to a three month old kitten named Leo. Disclaimer, I am no expert in introducing dogs to cats. I'm only going to be sharing my experience, our experience with introducing the two, what worked for us, and just because something worked for us, it may not work for you guys, but hopefully you guys can get something from our experience and what is currently happening. So please take this with a grain of salt. So number one, we were very observant in watching their body language, both Jackson's and Leo. If Leo was hissing or trying to get away or the hair on Leo's back was standing up, obviously that was just a sign that Leo was very stressed or in distress. And Jackson, he loves to play. He loves to get very overly excited. And so when he's very excited, we really like to keep our distance, keep those two their distances from each other, just so Jackson doesn't get too crazy and eventually stress out Leo. So we would put Jackson in a room or Leo and vice versa, taking turns in the room just to separate those two and to calm them down. If Leo started hissing at Jackson, we would separate them. If Jackson started nipping at Leo a little bit, not biting, we would separate them, of course. We do not want it to get out of hand or anything like that. It was very important to us that they get comfortable around each other, but, and also at the same time, not learn that playing too hard is normal. Knowing that it is in Jackson's instinct to chase in a herd, we were very adamant and consistent in making sure that Jackson does not chase Leo every single time or a lot of the times for that matter. And that is a great segue for number two. We actually started to teach Jackson the command of stop chasing or no chasing when it comes to playing with Leo. Again, it is in Jackson's instinct to chase and herd, and he just loves to play that way. And because of that and to combat that, we taught him the words no chasing. Every single time he started to chase Leo or was about to, we would actually hold him down, say no chasing, and then after a little bit, we would let him go. But again, we were very consistent because even though that could be seen as very playful, Jackson, I, I know him, he's very consistent in herd in chasing and doing all that stuff. And if Leo is running around constantly, eventually it can be very stressful for Leo, for a kitten in general. And so we were really consistent and we're still working on it to stop Jackson from chasing every single time. As I am filming this, it has been a week of basically teaching and training Jackson not to chase. And I will assure you that it has actually been working every single time Jackson sees Leo, he's not always chasing, he's not always going after Leo, he's more comfortable around Leo and compared to the beginning, he would always chase him, but now it's a lot more settled down and we're still gonna be more consistent with that. Number three, I think what really helped in really them getting comfortable and being able to not get too rowdy or violent or anything like that around each other is at nighttime or when we're out away from the apartment is actually keeping them in separate rooms and making sure that they're not together unsupervised. Although I'm sure that they would have been all right if they are together and we aren't there, we just do not want to risk anything bad happening and nothing bad has happened but again we just do not want to take that risk we do not want anything to essentially become a habit while we're not there while we are not able to intervene and correct them so again I definitely recommend keeping them in separate rooms at nighttime or even just while you're away keeping them away from each other just so nothing bad happens. Eventually, I am sure they'll get to that point where they can be together unsupervised, but at least for now, there is no playtime unless we are there. Number four, I definitely recommend doing this. We did this at the start and I believe it really helped tremendously in kind of building that relationship between the two and that is actually feeding them their treats respectively around each other. So as you guys can see, I'll put some footage up. All right, so what Katie and I are doing right now at this very moment, she's feeding Leo his treats, now I'm feeding Jackson his treats. And slowly but surely, they are getting a lot more comfortable with each other. And with the treats, they are positively associating this whole interaction. Jackson's actually Leo. scared of Leo. <laughs> so, 
Good boy. Yeah, but we're making progress. Good boy. <laughs> Leo seems like so perplexed. Oh my god, Leo seems so perplexed all the time. Oh, hey, good boy. Good boy, Leo. Good boy, Jack. Good, good boy, boy, Leo. Good boy. Good boy. Good, good boy. boy. And this way, it kind of subconsciously tells them that, you know, everything is all right. There is no need to be afraid. There's no need to be scared or anything like that of each other as this is a safe space. So again, going back to what I've kind of preached in my past videos, it is all about positive association. And by giving them treats, it shows them that this is a positive scenario. This is a positive interaction and Thus, they'll be more comfortable with each other and eventually be able to sleep, nap, and do whatever they can unsupervised. And number five, lastly, it is all about patience and consistency. Even though I feel like Jackson and Leo got really comfortable really fast and I think we just got lucky, it does take time for a puppy, dog and a kitten and a cat to really get used to each other like i think we just got lucky because leo is still a kitten so he's still in that socialization slash learning phase and so he had no bad experience prior to jackson to really combat a positive association with jackson uh jackson like he is still learning he's a very smart dog so obviously like he still herds and chases but at the end of the day like he knows what he's doing he knows not to chase he knows not to do that but again i just got to be consistent i got to be patient and that is one thing you guys are going to take away anything from our experience with introducing these two is that it takes a lot of patience and it's you got to be consistent with everything with correcting with uh feeding petting just any interaction between the two you want to correct and you want to be consistent with that but yeah guys if you have any stories or questions or comments about what has happened this week with jackson and leo please leave them down below in the comment section as i'm happy to interact with you guys to help you guys out in any way shape or form if you guys could leave a like on this video it would mean a lot to jackson and me as it really helps in the youtube algorithm to spreading this video to other people if you're new here please hit that subscribe button too tell your dogs you love them jackson i love you thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day all right jackson do you have any advice for dogs meeting cats anything say it fluffy all right guys there you have it <laughs>